and today we are at the Confucius Temple in Jiading Province in Shanghai. So we're going to have a little look around and have a look at some of the gardens, uh, have a little look also at some of the temples here. Chinese for landscape is Sun Shui, which literally means mountain water. And mountains and rivers are a very big part of Chinese geography. So a central part of any garden landscape is a pond surrounded by rock formations. They're not geometrically designed as formal European gardens where humans see themselves as masters. The plants chosen in a Chinese garden are not arbitrary. They're chosen with intent. They have, it's very symbolic. And then we get this beautiful pine tree, which is in Chinese traditional belief, a symbol of longevity. To sit amongst the dragonflies and contemplate. old-style Chinese architecture in the middle of Shanghai. The ceiling in this building is quite beautiful, but also the sides where you have intricate depictions of scenes from China's history. So now we are going up to the Confucius Temple. So here is the monument to Confucius. It's very grand. And you have a lot of this bronze, old, ornate bronzeware. So people would come here to pray and uh, ask for guidance. So here we have all of the prayers to Confucius on these beautiful little cards. So a little bit more about Confucianism in China. It's been part of Chinese life for the last 2,000 years. So it's very, very old. And it's based, it's more of a humanist philosophy rather than a religion. He was a 6th century BC philosopher and he lived during a period of incessant warfare and uh, warring tribes all vying for power in China. So Confucius identified five different relationships. Father-son, elder-younger, ruler-subject, friends and husband-wife. So he believed that if people respected uh, the relationship that they were in. If a son respected his father um, and there was love between them, then that is one relationship that would lead ultimately to social order and the common good. At times during Chinese history, he's both been seen as a radical in his thoughts and also at times maybe as an obstructionist to change. So during the Cultural Revolution, Confucianism came under quite vitriolic attack Later on, it's been uh, adopted, um, and again, people look at Confucianism as a good way of living their lives. This is the examination hall. Okay, Adam's going to become a Confucius student. <laughs> Sleep here and eat here. Really? So they'd be here for quite a while, maybe over a week. The roof is uh, all wooden and a wooden bench. What do you think? I'm proud of Yeah, I'm proud Interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, is, do you think it's contemplative enough to be a Confucius follower? Yeah, I was telling them that I prefer the Buddhist temples because yeah. it's even more contemplative. Mm. Because even through it in this case. But here it looks really nice. Hey guys, that's all from me for this episode of Discover Shanghai. All about Confucius temples and Confucianism. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. Make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope to make some really interesting films and see you guys soon.